I seek meaning and purpose in existence. But meaning and purpose are abstract, often arbitrary. How to explore rationally? One way is to explore origins. Origins reflect how things come about. Though they're clues, not proofs. So if my interest is existence, and the closest I get is the universe. How did the universe originate? How did it begin? What was before the beginning? If before the beginning even makes sense. I speak to cosmologists, physicists. To most, physical mindless laws generated the universe with no intrinsic meaning or purpose in the mix. A few believe that a supreme being is the creator. I'd like there to be such a God. But don't the discoveries of cosmology with ever more precise observations and explanatory theories eliminate the need for supernatural causes? How then can physicists who believe in God harmonize the discoveries of cosmology with the doctrine of creation? Cosmology and creation? I'm Robert Lawrence Kuhn, and this is Closer to Truth. I've often examined how the universe began, but I've not done so entirely from the perspective of sophisticated believers, physicists and science literate philosophers who see the universe as God's creation. It's not that I cocoon myself with believers. It's not that I don't know or reject the scientific strength of non-believers. Rather, I want the best arguments of scientific believers, get their best shots, then evaluate them. That's why I'm attending a conference at Notre Dame, The Quest for Consonants, Theology and the Natural Sciences. One of the primary topics here is cosmology and creation. And I begin with a physicist who focuses on cosmic origins from a theological perspective, the president of the Society of Catholic Scientists, Stephen Barr. Steve, you're a physicist, you believe in God, and you see the universe as leading to God. Many physicists and cosmologists would see the opposite. They'd see the more we've learned about cosmology, the less we need God. I think some people have the misconception that cosmology uh, can replace God, the cosmological theories. So they would say, well, I, the universe had, maybe had no beginning, or if it did have a beginning, uh, physics can explain that beginning. The argument for God is not that the universe had a beginning, it's that the universe has existence. And I would use the analogy of, of a symphony. The beginning of the symphony is just the first notes. The origin of the symphony, the source of its being, is the composer, the creative mind of the composer. And so you wouldn't explain why Schubert's Fifth Symphony exists, by pointing to its first notes. That would be silly. And it's also silly to explain why there's a universe by pointing to the details of the Big Bang or some cosmological theory of how the universe started. It's the mere fact that the universe exists at all, that it's real, uh, that points to the fact there must be a source of reality, there must be a source of being, there must be a God. The traditional Christian view and Jewish view of creation is not that God sort of did something at the beginning. It doesn't really have to do that much with the beginning in the temporal sense. It has to do with the fact that the universe is not a fictitious or hypothetical or possible world, but a real world. Mm. God is the, a source of reality. Mm. For religious people, that absolute, that ultimate reality is God. For the atheists, the ultimate reality is the physical universe. The difference, however, is the physical universe is the kind of thing that uh, doesn't have to be the way it is. It doesn't have to exist. It, I, it, it doesn't have to have all the particular features sure. that we see. There's a lot that's contingent about this universe that could have been otherwise. Uh, God, in the traditional view, is a necessary being, can't be otherwise than he is. And so you have to choose. Do I want the universe to be the ultimate reality or God? They're both logically possible. I happen to think that God is a more 
Uh, yeah, reasonable. And, and, and to take the universe uh, on that argument, it wouldn't be the universe as we know it today, which is very contingent. It would be some sort of meta laws. I would think they would be deeper than quantum physics laws as today. It has to be some sort of integration with general relativity. Whatever it is, what, whatever the ultimate meta, most fundamental, the deepest bedrock of, of physical laws, to make the fair analogy, that's what you would have to, to, to go to. Right, but there are an infinite number of possible laws there could be the laws of some possible universe. And this universe happens to have some particular laws, and that raises the question of why these laws, why not some other laws? Uh, again, one could take it as a brute fact. Don't ask why. These are the laws. Take them or leave them. The theist says, well, there are laws because there's a lawgiver, and uh, the lawgiver framed these laws, and perhaps he had something in mind when he framed these particular laws rather than some other laws. Let's look at the uh, beginning of the universe and all the new theories of how the universe began, inflation theory, uh, internal chaotic inflation theory. Some theists would look to that as giving additional corroboration that, the, uh, that there was the creation ex nihilo from nothing that the current understanding of the Big Bang theory, inflation theory, supports that. Do you agree with that? Well, uh, I don't, actually. So whether the universe began with a quantum fluctuation, which I think is a beautiful and plausible idea, uh, whether there's uh, chaotic inflation, whether there's eternal inflation, all these things, very interesting. It tells us a lot about the universe, tells us how the beginning of the universe unfolded, but it doesn't really touch the question of whether the universe, uh, what made this a real universe and not just some hypothetical one that exists in, uh, as a mathematical possibility. Stephen distinguishes between the beginning of the universe and the ultimate source of its existence. He claims that it doesn't much matter if the universe had a beginning. The defining fact is that the universe has existence. In other words, a universe that went through endless cycles of Big Bangs would fit his God created the universe model just as well as a single Big Bang. If this is theological retreat, I need to call it such. If it's theological reality, it's a powerful point and I need to pursue it. If correct, I'd need to decouple cosmological accounts of the Big Bang from theological foundations of causation. I speak with an orthodox theologian and philosopher whose classic understanding is that God is timeless and unchanging, David Bentley Hart. David, I have to tell you that uh, the great majority of leading cosmologists do not believe in God. Uh, they believe that remarkable observations and theories in cosmology can pretty much explain the entirety of the universe. You disagree with that, and I'd like to understand why. Well, they, can, they, they may be able to explain the entirety of the universe in terms of the succession and articulation of physical states that compose it. They can't explain its existence. And this seems to be a constant point of misunderstanding. They're not even asking the same question. And we go around in these circles continually. Cosmology is an etiological question. It's a question about physical states. So long as there are physical states, uh, one can succeed another, one can arise from another. The question of creation is ontological. It is the modal plausibility of the existence of any physical state at all. And that's not a modern uh, retreat from older theories. That, that you can verify from the earliest sources in all these traditions, from the Cappadocian Fathers in Christian thought, from Aquinas, who explicitly says the issue of creation is unrelated to whether the universe is an eternal succession of physical states or not, even if the universe existed without beginning still this question would need to be answered because of it. it's of a radically different kind. So the very notion that cosmology could even contribute to this issue is, is problematic. It makes a wonderful contribution to thinking about the nature of uh, the universe within the embrace of, if you happen to be a theist, a theistic picture. But it's not a logical rival to, and it's certainly not a, a logical answer to the question of existence. I'm, I'm fascinated by modern cosmology, don't get me wrong. I love reading it. Uh, 
but I don't, I don't confuse it with the sort of questions that touch upon the issue of God or the issue of creation. You know, what if Roger Penrose is right and we're bouncing through uh, one universe after another as, as each one exhausts its energetic potential, it's, it becomes a liminal state in which a new universe arises? Fine. That happens to be a, a common view of many Indian mm forms of theism, that in no way for them in Vedantic tradition again would uh, have anything to do with the question of the divine ground, the divine origin, the possibility of the existence of, of physical orders, of their arising and their p passing away. I, I find the story of the Big Bang fascinating, but I don't see it as being particularly uh, uh, relevant to the question well, we, of creation. Because some theists uh, would would look at Big Bang as a stronger affirmation that the kind of God that they believe in is, is real, that that kind of creator who creates from nothing had to have a beginning to the contingent reality we call the universe. If they could establish, I don't know how you would do this, by some physical or theoretical means that before the Big Bang there literally was no physical state, then perhaps I'd have to say they've, they've got a point. Uh, I don't see <laughs> That how sounds like a logical impossibility. <laughs> yes, but see, in recognizing that it's a logical impossibility, right, you already right, recognize right. the issue of contingency. Right. Because, all right, if there were no prior physical state, but even if there were a prior physical state, when you reduce that uh, to the grounds of the possibility of any contingent reality, you'll arrive at the same conclusion. Either way, it's an infinite regress if it isn't grounded in that which is not contingent. To David, the only conceivable way to get God from the Big Bang creation of our universe would be to prove that prior there were no physical states or laws at all, which is a logical impossibility. The bedrock question is the manifestation of existence, not the mechanism of creation. God is certainly the ultimate ground of all being, but not necessarily the specific designer of our universe's Big Bang. It's an argument for God that cannot be refuted, which means it's not science and nothing follows. It's like you can't prove God does not exist. Okay, but nothing follows. But many theists do pay special attention to Big Bang cosmology. An ever-existing universe of infinite duration is disturbing. I meet Christian philosopher Nancy Murphy. For three decades, Nancy has been following cosmology and creation, from the fine-tuning of our universe to the possibility of multiple universes. How has she kept her faith? Nancy, how do you see the history of cosmology as it affects your a status as a believer who is a, a philosopher of religion? Well, I would like to take the history back a lot longer, up through the Middle Ages in particular. Uh, the, the discussions with uh, the theologian Thomas Aquinas, comparable discussions in Judaism and Islam, uh, reacting to Aristotle's cosmology. And one of Aristotle's positions was that the uh, universe is eternal. There was a um, relative consensus amongst theologians through the Middle Ages, the assumption was that the doctrine of creation is actually talking about the world that we live in. And some of the points that were made is uh, the world was created out of nothing. Scripturally, it had a beginning, a temporal beginning, that the world is good, and so forth. When modern theology came along and put the focus all on human religiosity and human awareness of God, those questions about the actual universe dropped out of mainline theology. And what I have found fascinating is the way cosmologists have brought the, those old uh, issues back onto the table. There was a principle that uh, the uh, late 
ancient or early medieval theologian Augustine applied liberally throughout his theology, which was the principle of plenitude. Mm -hmm. That was the idea that if God is a creator, surely God would create as much as God could create. And I have come to recognize that if the scientists do decide that there are multiple universes, then that's just a major extension of Augustine's principle of plenitude. But if you take the multiple universe hypothesis, part of that, in order to create a universe that is fine-tuned, you have the innumerable and perhaps infinite number of universes, uh, but the incredibly vast number of them must be sterile if you're just mixing up yes, by random absolutely. all of these uh, uh, constants absolutely. of physics. That well, seems to undermine your theory of a God doing all this for, well, for there, planetary. There's no, we humans are in no position to say that God doesn't value non-humans <laughs> and that God wouldn't value having as many universes as possible. Even empty ones that are yeah. sterile? Yeah, now, plenitude. I, I, we have got mosquitoes and we've got humans, plenitude. But what is interesting about the multiverse hypothesis is it raises once again an argument that Thomas Aquinas had with a contemporary, St. Bonaventure, about uh, whether it's conceivable that our universe could uh, be of infinite duration. And Thomas argued that it's conceivable, but scripture teaches that our universe did have a beginning. But it raises the question whether it makes sense to talk about an infinite number of universes or an infinite series of universes. And so the same sorts of questions about the intelligibility of taking a concept like infinity that applies in mathematics and using it to talk about physical reality uh, has just been brought right back into theologians' faces again. Do you have a, a dog in this fight in terms of a theology? If you have multiple universes where you would have one series that had to have some kind of beginning to be, go infinite and another where you, you could have been infinite in the past. I've got a chihuahua in this fight. <laughs> <laughs> I tend to agree with Bonaventure's idea that if there's an infinite series that from past infinitely, that uh, things should have progressed through an infinite series of whatevers, whether it's events in our universe or universes in uh, this foam of universes. Hmm. Uh, and I tend to side with Bonaventure that in the concept of infinity simply cannot be applied to physical reality. Yeah, and the difference between a, a, a conceptual... Nancy cannot conceive how the universe could have an infinite past. Mathematical infinities, she says, are not literal countable physical infinities. And with an infinite past, everything possible, no matter how remote, would have already happened, and happened an infinite number of times. It gets nuts. Have I gotten lost in ontological speculations? I'm trying to test the idea of God as creator, see science and the universe as they are, sense whether God can be justified. Is there a different kind of theistic perspective? I speak with a British physicist who wants to refocus the traditional science theology debate, Tom McLeish. One of my research themes, if you like, as a leitmotif, is, is order out of chaos. So my physics dwells in the microscopic world or the, the nanoscopic world of polymers and macromolecules and membranes where everything is in continuous fluctuation, random motion that we call heat. That's what heat is in current physics. So how does this chaotic molecular world give rise to the ordered structures of so living things? The, the, the concept of uh, chaos to order is a fundamental one to understand science. How does it enrich your theology. You're not finding God through your polymers. No, I, I'm doing actually precisely the opposite. And, and so in fact, the theology of science that I've tried to develop as a scientist 
it is almost diametrically opposed to this idea of natural theology that you just articulated. Right. Um, the, the, that tradition says that it is indeed possible to see God through nature. And I take a very, very different stance. I think we stand next to God, looking with God into nature. So I'm trying to develop a, um, a sort of science in the service of God. That's the question. Um, the question, how does one reconcile science and religion, to me is a completely non-question. I'm fed up with that question. It mm. assumes too much. I want to ask a different question. I always want to ask, what is science for within the kingdom of God? You are assuming God exists. There's no doubt, there's no analysis, God exists. Now I'm a scientist, I'm looking yeah. here, yeah. And, and now I'm seeing how they can articulate. Is that, is that fair? That's fair enough. Although, of course, you, one continues to ask the question, um, it, which I do in terms of my science or my faith, it's I have one mind, not two here. Does this all make sense? So a theistic or Christian theistic view of the universe, one's always thinking, look, is this commensurate with the universe I see? My, my view is that is that there are no strong um, irrefutable arguments for or against theism. It's a step of faith either way. One has to assume something and then you get on and look at the universe around you. You're a believer to begin with, but yeah. does that generate some kind of a, uh, of, of a, a warm feeling inside? <laughs> I don't know about warm feelings inside. We all like warm feelings inside, don't we? I have reflected on what difference does my Christian faith make to the science I do. Um, and I think maybe subconsciously, my um, research track around random order out of chaos mm. is a biblical theme. In the book of Job, it's all about the wild side of, of, of nature. And I've realized that, that I like exploring the subtlety of um, how, how nature is endowed with freedom and explores that freedom in both Brownian motion materials, in evolution, to discover possibilities. And that does echo with my view of what a creator might be like and his love of freedom. Tom suggests a theology of science, where science enriches appreciation of a God-created world. Thus, the concept of creation becomes more than how the universe began, more even than its raw existence. Complexity out of simplicity is also part of the story. I agree, but only if I start by assuming that God exists, which spins reasoning in a circle. That's why I remain fixated on how latest theories of cosmology articulate with theistic explanations of creation. Still at the Quest for Consonants conference, I speak with a physicist who is also a priest, the research director of the Ian Ramsey Center for Science and Religion at Oxford, Andrew Pinsent. Andrew, from the standpoint of a particle physicist and as a believer, uh, wh what, what can you tell me about the structure of reality? Gosh, well, a good way of starting uh, an explanation, particularly in regard to the science and theology issue, is uh, what happens when I go into schools and I give uh, talks often to school children and they ask me, how can I be a priest and believe in the Big Bang? And I say, we invented it. <laughs> well, what does the Big Bang tell us about the structure of reality? Basically, that there's a kind of fruitful simplicity at the start of everything. The universe begins simple, but with a, an extraordinary potential. Uh, and then gradually, it's like a flower blooming. It's not like an explosion, which is a chaotic thing. Gradually, the different light is uh, transmuted or becomes particles, and then particles combine and create atoms, and then you get atoms cooking in stars to create the various uh, different, uh, different elements and so on. And there's a kind of wonderful story about all this, a wonderful narrative that out of this initial simplicity, but with a rich potential, comes this extraordinary, uh, extraordinarily complex and beautiful universe. What is the contribution of right. particle physics right. uh, to, to understanding that? With regard to particle physics specifically, we recreate the conditions of the Big Bang. And what happens is that some of the, uh, the forces which look very different in everyday life are suddenly seen to be much more closely related in, the, in that primeval state um, than, they, than they are in, the, in everyday uh, terms today. That we can recover some of the underlying simplicity that rich simplicity of the beginning of the cosmos. How does that inform your theological understanding? I don't think there are direct theological implications, but there's a narrative here which ties in very well with the grand theological narrative we've been using for nearly 2,000 years, that the universe has order and is the work of a loving creator. And therefore, we expect to find order, which we do find, 
albeit at a level our minds find difficult to grasp. And we find that the many different phenomena, which seem unconnected in everyday life, have an underlying unity. So I think there is uh, sorry, a, it's like a kind of consonance of the narrative. Uh, I wouldn't like to go further than that. For a theist, consonance between cosmology and creation is the best you get. The universe is consistent with a supreme creator designer. To atheists, of course, the universe and atheism are consonant, and the universe is consistent with the absence of God. Am I running in circles? Is progress possible? When consonance and consistent with are the touchstones, perhaps predictions can be compared as more or less likely. I'm not optimistic. Is a universe that began more consistent with a creator God? Theists are divided. Some say that the question is ontological, not temporal, that the pure existence of the universe is the puzzle to solve, irrespective of whether the universe had a beginning. Others, that a universe with a beginning is more consistent with God. I am in awe of pure existence, but to me, if the universe had a beginning, consistent with the Creator would be stronger. Because an eternal universe that did not have a beginning could be the ultimate brute fact with no need for God, more easily than could a universe that had a beginning. Yet, the mystery of existence is the most profound and probative question. That's not inconsistent, that's closer to truth. For complete interviews and for further information, please visit closertotruth.com.